Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a very affordable dynamic microphone. That microphone is the Shure SV100, which is a multi-purpose microphone. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you between $30 and $35. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set just at around 430. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Nolan Ryan or some baseball thing. <laughs> you will of course get the microphone. You'll get a 15 foot XLR to quarter inch cable, some documentation, and that is actually it. Although you can go with the SV100WA and you will get a microphone clip and a zippered bag as well. Then as far as the build quality, I don't really have any complaints about this thing. It is sure, so it is pretty dang well built. It has an all metal body, a metal grill. It weighs in at 244 grams. On the side of the microphone, you will find an on off switch. And here is what the actual microphone's capsule looks like. Then as far as the specs, the microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 Hertz to 15 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 52 dB, and an impedance of 600 ohms. Now I am spinning around the microphone to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, here's what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Because this is a handheld microphone, I will pass it back and forth between my hands so you can see how well it does at rejecting handling noise. Now let's see how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you lead gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here's how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now let's see how well this microphone rejects bumps of the desk and boom arm using a standard Shure microphone clip. Now just to be as thorough and maybe obnoxious as I can possibly be, I am going to tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I will go ahead and flip the microphone on and off so you can hear what kind of noise that generates. Now as somebody who does spoken word, this is not something I would do, but in case you do, now I am wrapping my hand all the way around the microphone's grill and here is how it sounds, here's how it affects the tone, just so you get an idea of that if that's something that you care about. Now you know. Bum, 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 bum. Flying star. Now I want to do a very quick test between the Shure SV100 and a couple of other budget <laughs> dynamic microphones. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, I am speaking into the Shure SV100. I am three inches off of the microphone. Gain on the interface is now set to four o'clock. No post processing, but check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post. Now we are on the Pile PD Mic 58, which is clearly a knockoff of the SM58. This is maybe a 10 to $15 microphone. Same gain settings, same everything. Check the lower thirds to see how much I boosted it. Here is how the Pile sounds compared to the 
SV100. We are back on the SV100. Here is how the microphone sounds. Let's jump to the next one. Now we are on the king of the budget handheld dynamic microphones, the Behringer XM8500. This goes for $20 to $25, so cheaper than the Shure SV100. Here is how the microphone sounds in comparison to that other one, the Shure. Let's jump to back to, let's do whatever we're doing. Let's do that. Testing, testing, testing. We are on the SV100 again. Let your ears get acclimated to this sound of this microphone, and let's jump to the next one. Now we are on the Samson M10, which is a dynamic microphone, which goes for about $30, three inches off, same gain setting. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, and here is how it sounds. Hey, hey, Monica, we are back on the SV100. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to another one and compare it to that. Next up, we are on the Shure SV200, and looking at the manual, I don't really think there's any difference between the 100 and the 200 other than the grill. I don't think there's any difference, but regardless, here's how the SV200 sounds compared to the SV100. Hey, podcastage Michael here, and I am back on the SV100. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone. We, of course, do need to include some other Shure microphones in this comparison, so here I am on the Shure SM48, which goes for about $40. Same gain setting on the preamp or interface. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, but here is how a $40 microphone compares against a $30 microphone from the same company. Sometimes I just want to take the day off, but I don't do it, and we are back on... (laughs) I'm opening up. We are back... (laughs) We're back on the SV100. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone. Now we are on the Audio-Technica ATR1500, which I believe is now discontinued, but this go went for about $60. Same gain setting, same distance. Check the lower third. Let's jump back to the Sure. Please, please, please help me. I am being held hostage, being forced to review microphones. Not true. That's a joke. Here's the SV100. Let's go to another microphone and let you hear that one. Now we are on the Shure PGA58, which is a $60 microphone, which is still available. I am at three inches, gain at four o'clock, check the lower third. Here is how a $60 microphone sounds like compared to the SV100. Does it sound like it's two times as good? Let me know in the comments down below. Engagement is good. I certainly hope this is the last microphone we're comparing it against, but here is the SV100. Let's jump to another one. And lastly, we are on the most famous stage microphone of all time, I'm guessing, the Shure SM58. This is a $100 dynamic handheld microphone. If you've ever been to a concert, you have seen this thing. But here is how a $100 microphone sounds like compared to the SV100. Does this microphone sound like it is worth over three times as much money as the SV100? Same gain setting, same distance, and check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. We are done with the comparisons. Let's jump to the music test now. Woohoo! Let me tell you a quick story about how I'm gonna die I'll be choking on some pizza in my living room tonight Honestly, (laughs) maybe not tonight, but someday I can absolutely see that happening And that's why I need a wife, not for love, not to raise a family with Just so I have somebody to administer the Heimlich maneuver on me How utilitarian, right? (laughs) I'm a psychopath. I've lost my mind. All right. I went into this review expecting very little because it is a $30 microphone. And all I can say now is, well, it it is a microphone. It is a microphone. Nobody can deny that. 
And first up, in terms of pros, the background noise rejection on this thing was pretty impressive. The build quality leaves very little room for complaints. Sure does that really well. And it's a $30 microphone, and it works. Very cool. And then as far as cons, the main thing is the handling noise. It is abysmal, atrocious, terrible, awful, very bad, no good, whatever type of day. And the on-off switch is incredibly loud. So if you're going to be using that as a mute switch, be careful. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, it has a very biting and aggressive tone, which you know I am a very big fan of. The top end does tend to get a little bit piercing and a little bit fatiguing, but it's not the worst thing in the world. The low end is not overpowering because the low end of this mic is a bit recessed, and I think that all culminates into a pretty usable tone that if I was in a pinch, I would be happy to throw this in front of a guitar cab and get some aggressive sounds out of it. Then on the acoustic guitar, I was not keen of this mic on that instrument, mainly because the upper frequencies are so boosted that it starts to come across as artificial and unnatural, and to my ears, that is just not pleasant to listen to, so unless I was desperate, I would not use it for the acoustic. Next up for singing, again, I wasn't a big fan of it for that application. While I was recording, I was far from clipping, but in the upper frequencies, it almost sounded as though it was breaking up. It had this grittiness and graininess to it that I was not a fan of, and I think would yield most vocal recordings pretty unusable unless you're looking for that effect. So I guess for a live karaoke style event, it would be fine, but for recording, I wouldn't throw it in front of a singer. And lastly for spoken word, sizzle. That's how I would describe it. As I just mentioned, it does have that grittiness and graininess in the upper frequencies, which I just don't find very natural or pleasing. When I compared it against a few other Sure Dynamics, it did sound far less nasally and a bit more open. And when I compared it against some other more affordable dynamic microphones, it wasn't as boosted in the air frequencies and it sounded far less harsh, but it still has that sizzle and I think there are better sounding options in the bunch. To wrap up, would I recommend the SV100, a $30 dynamic microphone? Kind of. It does come down to personal preference, but I think the shortcomings here are a bit too much to overcome. The unnatural top end, the atrocious handling noise, really just ruin it for me. A few years ago, I may have recommended it, but now that I have tested out a lot more microphones and become a lot more acclimated to the handheld dynamic market, if I had $30, I would probably go for the Behringer XM8500. I think it offers a much more balanced and natural sound compared to the SV100. So if you're in the sub $30 microphone shopping range, XM8500 is what I would recommend. But let me know in the comments down below, did you like the SV100 better than the other microphones? Or did you have another favorite? of the bunch. Let me know in the comments down below. And with all of that being said, if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. <laughs> if you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want to subscribe, click that logo down beneath me, and don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, podcastage.com slash Discord. If you want a higher resolution version of this review, check the link in the description. I almost forgot where it was. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Thank you all so much. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. I will talk to you later. Bye.